I'm Barry Funkhauser, and you're tuned in to the Barry Funkhauser Show. Barry Funkhauser here. That's right, Barry Funkhauser. And, oh, it's a special day. I'm bringing on my podcast co-host, Joe, on with me to talk to a very new, very deep rock band from the Valley. Joe, we're talking to Helen's Bay today. Hey, guys. Hi. Hello. Hey, guys. Hello. Right. Now, this is so cool, man. Like... There's four members of the band, Alex, Lex, Josh, and Gavin, and they're all in the Zoom room from different locations today. Such a, an amazing technological interview that we're doing this morning, gentlemen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. My yeah. pleasure. It's a pleasure, yep. So let's go this back. Is to only, this is only a technological innovation for us old dudes. Like you guys have <laughs> like, you guys are all digital natives. You've been doing this since like before you were born. Us yeah. were like Zoom. What the heck is Pretty Zoom? Much. What do we do? <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, we're not that bad. We're not that. Bad. The first thing they said was, "Whoa, this feels like school." <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? We're like, "Oh, wow, okay, great." So, 2019, you guys formed a band called Helen's Bay. Let's go back in the time machine, doodly doot, doodly doot. And how did you guys find each other? How did this band form? So basically, um, me and Alex uh, met our freshman year of high school, which was like, I think, 2017 or 2018. And um, I took a class, a cinema class, and I was in a band with another guy. And we met a guy at my school. Alex went to a different high school. And we met this guy in my cinema class, and he was really into a lot of music that we were into. And he said, oh, I know this guy, you know, he's a drummer and a bass player. You should come jam with us, you know, come to his house. And we did, and I think we jammed for like two or three hours. And then when everyone left, um, Alex was playing bass the whole time and he hopped on drums and we just kind of had like a sort of bond. And then we uh, we would jam occasionally. And in 2020, uh, when the pandemic started, um, we got together more and we were like, oh yeah, I think we should actually like, you know, try and legit do this and have like a real band. So um, we kind of started seeking people out. Um, we went on a website called Band Mix. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's kind of like oh, a yeah. dating app for musicians. Yeah, it's dating app for band people. Like <laughs> yeah. you're, you're oh, trying to like figure awesome. it out. Yeah, like you yeah, put it's in your it's, kinda, it's, like, it's awesome. Yeah, it's like MySpace meets Tinder kind of. It's, it's pretty yeah. cool. But um, I basically I got a premium account and I put up an ad um on my profile you can, can like um search based on like your area and your age and stuff and i would basically just said hey i'm looking for anyone who plays bass or guitar or sings between the ages of like you know 17 and 21 and um lex responded to my ad he was like well i own a bass <laughs> and then he showed up and we just he was like do you want me to bring my guitar or bass and i think we were we just ended up jamming and he was great at playing guitar, so we were like, okay, well, we got another guitar player. Oh, wow. And then we, uh, we were looking for singers, actually, and um, we couldn't really find anyone that was a fit for our band because they weren't really singing in, like, the style that we wanted. And I was just like, okay, well, I'll sing, you know, for now. <laughs> so we find someone, and then we ended up doing shows, and it, I kind of just, like, fell into it. So I sing and play guitar now, and... Um, and then we found Gavin the same way. Um, we auditioned a few bass players, and then we found Gavin on band mix. Um, pretty much, I just saw that he had a Rickenbacker bass, and I was like, "Oh, so this guy listens to Rush, so that'll be fun." And he's great. <laughs> yeah. He was right. Oh man, I, I do freaking love that. I love that so, so much. Yeah. So basically, we met using technology, pretty much <laughs> like you were talking about. It could be the first big band that ever did this. I've never heard of this before. You guys swiped right on each other. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Dude. Pretty much. And, okay, so was it easy to find the influences? Because, look, I heard Tool in it, and uh, you mentioned Rush. And there's a lot of prog rock influences prog rock going stuff, down. Man. Yeah. So, like, yeah. so how does that bode well for your age group? Like, do your do your fans are your fans digging it? I would assume that they're super duper fans, like like fish, you know, people like fish and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've actually I think... <laughs> Go ahead. 
Go ahead, Lex. Okay. Um, actually, a couple people have told me that they got into rock because of our band. So that's interesting. Oh, yeah, so they're doing it. They're doing like reverse um, uh, music discovery. Like they find your band first because you're like friends or acquaintances. And they're like, wait, what is this newfangled music you guys are playing? Has anyone ever played this before? And you're like, oh. yeah, guys, we're playing stuff from like the 70s and things. You know? so maybe, go just, maybe go like check out some old music, you know, from before you were born. Is that how it kind of yeah. works? Yeah, kind of. And a lot of you are very tall. Do you think that uh, plays a good role, plays a part in your um, prog rockiness? You think you can pull it off more because you're super tall? I think I'm average height. <laughs> yeah, we're both at Lex and I are like five nine. I, I'm I'm the freak here. It's fine. <laughs> I'm, it's weird. It's like our band. Like on stage, we kind of have like a pyramid going on. Like it's like between five nine and six four. It's kind of crazy. Five yeah, nine dude. is not average. Five nine is above average. So hey, just is know it? that you guys are you guys are, are really? considered tall. Yeah, yeah dude. Uh, aver average is five six. Five six. Yeah. Oh, wow. Really? I didn't, A lot yeah, of short you guys people. are stupid tall, man. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, all. right. So how did you guys get into like the rock influence itself? Because I mean, most of the most of the people your age group or whatever are listening to like pop or hip hop yeah. or. You know, they got like maybe you get like a one friend who's like, oh, man, I really like punk rock because, you know, I'm a skater guy or my dad liked it or whatever. Wh what what got you guys into playing actual rock? I think we all found out a different way. Um, I mean, I'll say and then the other guys can say, but I basically found my parents vinyl collection. And then they had like uh, Billy Squire and like Rush and. You know, all these like, your parents were the vinyl. cool parents. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. I just found this box in my garage and I was like, what is this? And I had I got a record player and I just started listening to like Led Zeppelin and stuff. So that was pretty cool. Nice. And I just kind of expanded. Yeah, we all kind of started with Led Zeppelin and the Beatles and uh, hey, Rush. The doors, man. Don't the doors. The yeah. So for, for me personally, um, my dad, when we were always be in the car, he'd always play like 93.1 Jack FM. Oh, so yeah. like, I, I kind of grew up on that. And also a big influence was a rock band. That's why I started playing mm. drums. The game is awesome. I actually worked on that game. Are you serious? I was, yeah. I was one of the community managers for that I'm making, game. It was really, I'm, really fun. I'm making a drum hero, like knock off a rock band for my computer science final right now. Oh, Dude. Damn, that's awesome. <laughs> That bunch of geniuses super, super here. Cool. Bunch yeah. of freaking rocket science scientists here, Joe. Sheesh. No. Uh, uh, no, yeah, working that game was a lot of fun. So that's really cool that you got into yeah. to rock music from a video game. I'm so yeah. excited. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. So do you think living in Southern California is a positive or a negative in terms of playing this kind of music? Oh, it's great. Because this is like the happening place, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I but, think being in Southern California is always good. There's always like a ton of music going around. I feel like it's kind of ingrained into the, you know, like the history of the this area. Yeah. Now, you ha have you guys been able to tour outside of California yet? No, we want to though. We're actually um, we're planning right. a college tour right now, so we oh, want to okay. kind of get out there. That'd be really cool. When, when are you planning out for? Are you gonna like you heading out in like the fall? Are you gonna try to get in like the last couple weeks of this year? What are you thinking? We're thinking like maybe it's still in the works, but we're thinking like maybe starting in August and we go through the winter. Oh, okay, cool. So um yeah, I, I would suggest do it doing like the, the California coast route. Um, and hitting all the colleges on the coast all the way up to, to Washington. Then you, mm -hmm. you jump over to Spokane. And then you start making your way down when it starts getting cold in the fall. Hey, you know, Joe, that's what I heard that bands, that's how they make it now. That band, you ever heard of the band Local Natives? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They played the tour that these kids here, Helen Spay, are talking about. And that's what made them super famous. Because, you know, there's a certain select type of music that can develop a following. And this deep rock that's going down with Helen's Bay. I mean, it's an instant magnet in terms of being a fan. Like, you, you can hear all of your influences. You guys have, you know, are on the very beginning of your legendary career. 
I think that's so awesome. Have Have you met anyone famous? Uh, what you know? Have you heard anybody? Have you had any feedback from like? I was going to say the drummer of Rush, but I think he passed on Neil Peart. Yeah, yeah Neil, Neil's, Neil's gone. Oh, yeah. but but what about like? Um... Uh, has Chad from Red Hot Chili Peppers reached out? I mean, oh, yeah. come He's on, you guys around. are huge now. They all these big bands should be wanting to reach out to you. No, but I think Hughes and Kettner liked one of our posts, right, Josh? Oh yeah, well, we played a show um, at the Poor House in Monrovia, and I posted oh, it on I my love story. That place. I reposted. Yeah, it's a great venue. We're actually playing there on April 29th. So, anyone listening to this, trying to get tickets. Yeah, you can you, know, you can up. send Helen's Bay a DM if you want a ticket. I'm, they're very engageable. <laughs> yeah, man. But uh, yeah, I reposted all my story, and then Hughes and Kettner liked our thing, so that was cool. Also, I think the guitar is for Guns N' Roses, right? Which one? You're talking about Slash? <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, no. Richard oh, the guy? No, I'm thinking of something else. I don't remember. Ozzy Osbourne, maybe? The guitarist yeah. for Ozzy or Ozzy himself? The guitarist for Ozzy. The guitarist of some band. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Dude, I'm telling you guys. It doesn't matter. You're on the spotlight. You're you're in the spotlight for all of these bands because they're looking for the new up-and-comers that can continue the legacy of rock that we have here. And, like, you guys are, like, really doing it. So I'm sure you, you're in the crosshairs of a lot of major players out there, especially being in Southern California playing these – you know these concerts you're playing what'd you say the poor room is that where you're playing poor house. house the poor house and you played corbin bowl that was a massive event so many kids yeah that was insane it was, insane, was insane dude oh I was here's like, a good question since, since we're talking about uh the concerts and stuff, where where is what venue do you guys want to play most mm. like what is the big venue where you're like oh man i would love to play that venue the Royal Albert Hall in London, for me at least. Now, why I say the Troubadour? Why is Tro that? Oh man, I love the Troub. Wait, why? Why the Royal L London yeah. Royal Albert Hall or yeah. Yeah. Why I mean, London? Pretty much all of my favorite bands that you know, like Arctic Monkeys, In Excess, you know, um, the Killers, and I've always like I don't know. It's just a cool venue, you know. It's got a. It's really old, so it's got great acoustics. Um, can fit a lot of people, and it's round, so it's yeah. I mean, oh right, because it's uh, it, it they they set it up in like the uh the Shakespearean uh theater style, didn't they? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's very cool. I have I've never been to London, so like I've never had a chance to go see a show there, which is really bum, which is a bummer for me. I have I've also never been to MSG in New York City, so but the Troubadour, the Troubadour, I've yeah. been to hundreds yeah. of times. Great venue. They really need better AC, but a great venue nonetheless. <laughs> well, dude, okay, so you guys are at a level. I'm so excited and fortunate to talk to Helen's Bay at this point in their career trajectory because at this point you're probably going to go on the road, have a van tour, college van tour. But, you know, the next big rung, I would assume, would be opening for a big band and strapping onto a tour. So, like... What band would be like your dream band to be the opener for? Like, uh, and you have to pick one that's currently touring right now. Um, I would say My Chemical Romance, but they just finished their tour. So, great band. I love it. Yeah. It's like well, one of my favorites. Uh, there is a band coming out in October. They might need an opener. I don't know if they do, but it would really mesh well with you guys. Anyone listen to Coheed and Cambria? Oh, oh of yeah. course, yeah. They're great. Yeah, yeah, they're coming out in October. They're real nice guys. Yeah, they went it's going to be I something like that. Time. Yeah, it's going to be something like that. You guys will play like the Greek theater, and then boom, we'll see you on TV, you know, playing oh, yeah. the Tonight okay. Show. Mm -hmm. Night Show? No, it's Saturday Night Live. Man. I always no see that. No one goes on the well, Tonight Show anymore. No, you go on the Tonight Show first, and then... You go for the, the 10 people that watch Jimmy Fallon on the Tonight Show. And yeah, then and then you, you're on... You, you and then you're on that up to Saturday Night Live? I no, no, and then you're on CBS Saturday morning, so you got to wake up at 3 <laughs> in the morning and do it. And then, um, hopefully, if you get overseas, you're on Later with Jules Holland. I think he's still doing that show. That is a dope 
show. But basically, I'm telling you guys that you're you're on a race car headed towards something awesome. So have you ever slapped yourself and said that like, wow, we're actually a band now. We we're making music. Like, have it has it sunken in yet? I think so. It's been like a for our formation of a band. Well, I don't know if it's if it's hit us like how fast we're like growing, I guess. But as a being like as a band, it's kind of been a very slow process. Like, I remember when it was just Josh and I for like two years, and then you know we found Lex and Gavin. Like, it was very it was a very slow process, and we had a lot of our songs written um, during that long process. For me That's personally, actually... oh, it's ahead. sorry, it's. It's been kind of a lot. Uh, two months ago, I was just a bedroom player, you know, just perusing band mix, band camp, whatever it's called. I forgot. And, uh, you know, Josh contacted me and then I just went straight into it. So, yeah, it's definitely pretty fast for me right now. Yeah, I think Gavin, we got him in the band and he played his first live show with him, like being being in the band for like two weeks. I think it was less than that. Less? We had like one or two rehearsals, and then yeah, yeah we had two. Oh, oh, and then and then he threw him up on stage at Genghis Khan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> way to go, man. Yeah, he was he was great about it. And he learned our song. Like, I, I remember, I remember after the show, he's like, "Is this how it goes?" And I'm like, "Yeah, pretty much." And he's like, "All right." Oh, I was terrified beforehand. I was oh, so much anxiety. But then you get there, and it's it went great, and it was just a lot of fun. You know, I, I get the same thing um, whenever I have to get in front of a crowd. I always get like the butterflies first. Yeah. Um, and I just keep reminding yeah. me like, you know what? The butterflies are good because it means you want it and you want to be there and you yeah. want to do a good job. So you're like nervous about doing a good job. Usually yeah. once I get up on stage, I say a few words and it's probably the same for you. You, you, you play the first couple notes and you're just like, cool, I'm just jamming now. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's like once you get on there, you for me personally, it's like you just get into like a flow state. Like for me, I'm just like I try to be in the moment and try and connect with my emotions while playing and listening to the the music. Yeah, dude. I mean, you can tell when you play together. Do you? Okay, so I ask this to every uh, band that I come across. Do you? Oh no! Oh no! No, not that one yet. Oh, not that one. Yeah. Okay. No, different There's one. A question at what, the end, guys. Just ask? wait for the question at the end. <laughs> yeah. No, this uh -oh. one is this one is the other one that I ask every band. Oh, okay. Do you, do you consider yourself a band, a production band, meaning you do, you you mend better behind the scenes making stuff, or an on the stage band, like you you have more fun on the stage? I think it's a little of both, right? Because like yeah. Um, we do a lot of preparation, like going into our shows or like going into our recordings. Like we always get together and try and like we do. It's basically like studying for a test for us. Um, like we prepared for this interview, you know, we kind of were like, OK, what's Barry going to ask? You know, and <laughs> I think um, I I think there's also like a level of um, just kind of mending like while we're playing live. Like, well, sometimes we'll just go into a jam before we do a song and it's not planned. And, you know, we just kind of try to feel it out. So. So it's both. That's cool. And you did your homework. See, <laughs> this is shocking to me. A am I asking all the questions you thought I would ask you? No, so far. Actually. No, I think there's like uh, one we didn't cover. No. There's yeah, one. Was... There's one. But I'm, was... you know, what I'm going to ask you, but that's later. We should have made a Quizlet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So, it... Oh, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead, go Bruce. ahead, Joe. It's your turn. Oh, um, no, because it's it's interesting to me that you guys formed basically during the coronavirus when the world was like turned upside down, and you know it wasn't normal living. You know, everyone had to kind yeah. of adjust. You know, so you guys met during Corona. Yeah, yeah. Well, a little like to, a year well, later, I think. You yeah, know, I, but it was still in the right in the right when you're mask. supposed to be going out there and doing things. You get hit right. with this global exactly. Uh, epidemic. Exactly. So how how do you feel like that? Um, you worked in formulating the band and helping you write those songs and giving you kind of like that weird time out where you had like a couple years where you could just like play music and you didn't have to worry about like the touring and all that stuff. And how is it different now that the world's kind of reopened and now you have to like, Oh man, okay. Now we got to get on on the road and we have to like promote ourselves. 
because it's different now. I think it was. I think it was um, the chrono. The timing of the coronavirus was good and bad, because, like I said, it was just me and Josh in the beginning. So I think it gave us a lot of time to sort of think about what we want and grow together as musicians. And um, it just felt for like the longest time, kind of like what you were saying, things are different now. It just felt like kind of four guys like practicing together, not really with uh, a set goal in the in the end, I guess. But once we started to like get Lex, that's when we started to get hungry for like, uh, I don't know, to go out there and play music more, which was kind of during the time when coronavirus was like, like you could go outside more and stuff was more lenient. So I think it was good and bad, but um, kind of going back to your last question, it's still like surprising, I guess, to think about like we, we're, um we're actually a band and we need to go on the road and tour, like you said. And that's all yeah, different dude. logistics than just like practicing or, yeah. hey, we're going to go play a show at a local place or whatever. Because now it's like, OK, now you got to get the van. Where are you going to stay that night? How yeah. many miles can you drive in a night and actually be ready for a show the next day? There's a lot of logistics that go into a road trip like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also well, an exciting time for you to like see the world meet some fans that you've never met before yeah. in different cities. Dude, you just, guys like, are going to learn. You guys are going to learn about each other in ways you never thought you would. Oh, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I th the other thing I think is that people are, I think people are hungry to get out now, um, mm -hmm. especially yeah. since things, you know, people can see live bands for like two or three years and it's all kind of coming back now. Yeah. Um, I mean, we just saw uh, Wolfgang Van Halen at the House of Blues. I think like two weeks ago. Yes. And, uh, Wait, did he did he bring out the Franken uh the Frankencaster? No. His, he, he his played, dad's guitar? Uh, he no. was playing all hollow bodies. Oh, interesting. Yeah. He's yeah, Wolfgang really has his own thing going on, Joe. Well, I know, but yeah. sometimes he brings out his dad's his dad's guitar and he plays it. That's all. I was just asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say, like, the crowd was, you know, I see a lot more people now. Because um, yeah, they're just kind of hungry to get out there, you know. Everyone hungry. came a little bit early. Yeah, hungry is the right word for it. It's like mass people, an exodus of people from their homes. It's like, what is playing? I'll go. There's so <laughs> many people out there. Well, you have a new album out, or a new song at least. Do you, are you working on an album? or Tell me about this song, Gold Painted Roses, that we're about to play here. Alex, I think you can... <laughs> Um, so gold painted roses, uh, I think it started off as a guitar riff from Josh and we kind of just, I mean, a lot of times Josh kind of like comes up with the main idea of the song, then we jam on it and the entire band sort of fleshes it out. Um, uh, for the lyrics, uh, we worked on that together. It's kind of, um, the gold painted roses is a metaphor for a relationship where, um, it's hard for one to blossom into maturity, hence why the rose is covered in gold. Because gold, I mean, although it is one of the metals that is most malleable, you can't really, like, form metal, you know, it stays solid. So that's how, sort of how the metaphor works. Dude, okay, hold the phone here. Alex, you play drums. Are you yeah. also writing? Kind of. Josh and I write together. That's yeah, rare, I isn't mean, it? Usually it's like I have like the structure and then we kind of do like a session where we work out the lyrics. Yeah. Like I just throw it together and then Alex will go and be like, no, no. You know? <laughs> so, but I think it's a good process because it, it gets everyone engaged and yeah. we all kind of feel the song more when we play it live. Like we all know what it's about. It's so awesome, dude. Okay. Well, your new song is out, Gold Painted Roses. You're playing on the 29th at the Poor Room in... Poor House. Poor House. Gosh, Gosh, darn it. <laughs> Sons of bitches. <laughs> the Poor House. You played there before, though, right, in Monrovia? Yeah. yeah. Great venue, by the way. Okay. Well, before we go here, I'm going to ask you a question. Usually I ask all these bands that come across, and you being a new band, maybe you have some insight. Would you rather... Get into a oh, no. battle. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I need to ask first. Oh, is yeah. It, go is for it, it all four of them against or is it each individual person? Against? Hey, you can't. You can't. I don't know. 
Okay, uh, just ask, ask the question. Go ahead. And it's ask up the to them. Okay. It's up to them to decide. I mean, right, it, it, it would make more sense if they all teamed up together and and did the same thing. But we'll we'll find out together, Joe. Okay. All right, go for it. Helen's oh, Bay, good. Helen's Bay here on the radio at Helen's Bay Band on Twitter. You can follow them and get their new song, Gold Painted Roses, and we're about to play it here. Helen's Bay. Would you rather get into a battle to the death with one? Horse-sized duck. Oh. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> one horse-sized duck or one hundred duck-sized horses. A battle to the death. Hundred duck-sized horses. Yeah, because I, I think if there is like a horse-sized duck, I feel like that duck would be really agile. I don't know. It's kind of scary. And ducks are aggressive, dude. <laughs> yeah, like with a massive beak, you could just like take one of us away <laughs> and bite your head off. <laughs> That's yeah. so but there's down. like, Better. but there's like four of you, right? There's four of you, so you might lose the rhythm section, but <laughs> at least some of us survived. <laughs> Do they get to use their instruments as weapons, Barry? I don't have answers to these follow-up questions. <laughs> I guess Can they, they could. make a crossbow out of a guitar and use drumsticks as arrows. That's genius. That's actually <laughs> a pretty good idea. It's pretty good. good See, but you're going with the end. That's why I have to ask these questions for people, you know? But you guys are going with the little ducks or the little horses. Little, little horses. horse size, the duck size horses. Okay. I, like I, was so scared. I was so scared going into that question. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's he going to ask? Well, I think you answered correctly. I mean, each one of you can probably take on 25 little guys and then you'll be all right. Yeah, because horses, I mean, what are they going to do, like, nibble on your, like, toes? I don't know. You ever seen an angry horse? <laughs> well, but yeah. they're duck size, though. They're I mean, they can, size. like, kick your shins, I guess. Yeah, I think you can take them. I agree. All right, Helen's Bay, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. You guys are great. Thanks for having Our us. pleasure. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, It's man. an honor. All right, we'll play Gold Painted Roses now. This is Helen's Bay. Roses never bloom 